Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, making innovation a part of the regular workflow and new ideas for managing photos. How might a newsroom force innovation to occur? One way is to enlist everyone in coming up with ideas. Another approach is to establish a dedicated team. The Futures Lab's Katie Mersman explains how news operations can make innovation a part of their regular workflow. At Gannett, there's an entire team in place to innovate and develop new ideas and strategies for the USA Today and smaller papers, thinking about everything from improving the mobile experience to finding new revenue streams. Gannett's lab tries to identify potential challenges the company might face and experiments with solutions. It's exactly the sort of thing Stephen Watt says companies can do to minimize disruption. The ideal approach is that you actually establish a function, which is sort of a watchdog for these type of disruptive events that are occurring. But you actually have to have somebody who has a fiduciary responsibility to actually um, s allow the issues that emerging technologies are identifying to properly surface up through the company and be taken seriously and not run through biases that product engineering may have. Watt says a successful disruption team should include a strategist to look at how the innovative ideas could be implemented, as well as at least two people who can actually build and troubleshoot the new products. At the Wall Street Journal, a website redesign prompted the newsroom to rethink the way they came up with ideas generally. Our leaders in the newsroom decided to make a structural change where product actually reported into the newsroom. So it's given the newsroom sort of a new power to see their ideas to come to light and, uh, and have ownership over that process. They also chose to use specific audience metrics to decide if the changes are working. Ideally, it's data-driven decisions um, more than just our gut, um, which is sort of what we relied on in the past, although it's incredibly important. Um, I think that data is really at the foundation of what we tackle first. But innovation also comes from the ground up. Both the Wall Street Journal and Gannett host internal innovation challenges where anyone can pitch ideas. Each challenge is open to employees outside the innovation teams and brings people from different uh, areas of the, the business side and the newsroom uh, together around a certain topic um, and in different themes. And so they try to uh, solve a problem around those different themes, uh, like personalization, for example. At Gannett, most of these challenges yield five or six new ideas the innovation team can work on and develop further. For the Futures Lab, this is Katie Mersman. One point that Stephen Watt stresses is that it helps to separate the people who manage existing products from the innovation team that hunts for disruptive ideas. That's because the people who maintain the quality of existing products tend to underestimate how disruptive a new technology might be. News-related images now come from both staff photographers and practically anyone with a smartphone, so managing a newsroom's photo report has become increasingly complicated. To address that, operations like BuzzFeed are finding new ways to stay on top of it all. We sat down with BuzzFeed's global photo director to learn more about what they're doing. At BuzzFeed, managing both the volume and variety of photos they use was a big challenge. In order to solve it, they opted to build an in-house asset management system. For the first time in a long time, we have, we've restructured all of the teams. So we've kind of brought everybody together and we're creating a workflow where if a story is done, we create the photography and then we go through steps to distribute it. Like these photos are going to social, this is going to be handed off to the Snapchat teams. So it's kind of like an assembly line. Here we've created the original stuff. We're putting it into the asset management system and then distributing it to, to the different teams. Yakubi estimates that there are about 200 people on BuzzFeed's product team which built the new system. As for the photo team, in addition to the photo editors, BuzzFeed also employs 11 staff photographers. The photo teams, the photo editors and photographers who create the original photography, they go through a process of editing it and kind of paring it down to here are the 10 to 20 photos that we want to use from this shoot. Um, that goes into the asset management system, and then from there, there's messages sent to, you know, we have a point person on the social team to go, hey, here are the five photos that you can use on Tumblr, Instagram, wherever you want to use it. Design will do the same thing. Um, we'll share the images with the design team in case they need to add lettering, anything on top of it, and then they'll go through the same channels of distributing it through to the different point people on social. and. I mean, the social team has also become the, the distributed team. But BuzzFeed publishes many images that aren't taken by staff photographers. Freelancers often contribute, and then there's the media they find online, like photos, memes, and GIFs. 
So finding a way to manage permission and licensing became a top priority in the new system. A lot of companies, the way they work is they'll get the permission and then they'll put that information into the metadata field, the photo, and upload it into the asset management system. And that's, that's the direction we're going in to make sure we're super clear about how photos are used and how often we can use them. You have to go in like granular and think about every use case. And then again, you add that layer of rights and clearances into it and also kind of putting in um, information about our contracts. So if it's been downloaded and used, we have to report that back into the tool. So there's a lot that goes into it. As for how they did that. We have a group of people in news who are well-versed in copyright law um, and also just knowing photographers in the field and hiring out um, the buzz stuff, which is again, how do you kind of figure out whether you have the rights to use a meme or something that's gone viral really quickly? BuzzFeed's photo management system is live, but it's still new, so the staff continues to experiment with it. For the Futures Lab, this is Berkeley Lovelace. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future.